I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, people? And you're also watching Golden Rule Media Conversations. And we got a great conversation here with Lisa Lakula. And I want to say, you know what? Kakula. I hope I said that right. I'm probably torturing her name. But she's an amazing vocalist with big hair and a big voice. And I'm in love. I'm in love. <laughs> welcome to the show. Did I say that wrong or right? It's I mean, close. Kakula. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Still good. Still very good. I it. I it's all it. good. It's all. There's no blowing it. You know it. <laughs> but big hair, big voice. I got that right. That's right. That's the. That's the most important part. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So we we here at Dream Chasers Radio and also at Golden Rule Media love to get the backstory a little bit on how this all began for you. This project specifically, or or my Your journey career. as a musician. Your career. My career. So I don't remember a time not singing. Um, that's just my whole life. I just always remember either singing with my mom. like, And when I say singing with my mom, I mean just breaking into song whenever she wanted to just kind of sing and, and, and talk out loud or any of that stuff. I don't remember not ever doing that. So I've been singing my entire life. Wow, that is something cool. Isn't it wonderful to be able to share these moments with your mom? Man, I there's so much there's so much that I learned without knowing that you're learning. Like that that's the key part of of that stuff which makes it really fun is that you're like, "Oh, I'm just doing this thing that's really fun that I really like to do that I'm a, you know, kind of a natural at. I I just love it." And then you find out later, "Oh, you've been getting your 10,000 hours in to learn how to do this thing." That's going to be your life. So it's wonderful. It is wonderful. You pay your dues before your dues are due, right? (laughs) (laughs) They always seem to be coming due, though. That's the thing that I'm on. (laughs) Yeah, true that. Okay, yeah. (laughs) Wow. So going from, okay, singing with mom to what happened? How How did Lisa become Lisa? Well, my mom was never a performer. She never really wanted to do anything like that. And and that's fine. But I found that the more that I sang, the more I wanted to sing and navigate finding a band, getting in a band, uh, doing music regularly. Um, and so once I kind of got on that path, I think I, when I was a, a child and a teenager, I, I pretty much just sang to records, you know, anything around me, that was my music school. But it it wasn't really performing live. It was like a craving to perform live. And then by the time I graduated from high school, that was when I first started looking into, okay, I think I better find a way to do this, to see if this is something that I can really do um, in front of people. And I just thought you had to know how to do all that, you know, live, not go into, I never really thought about being in a studio to do those things. I always thought about it as a live situation, singing and performing live. Mm. And what happened when you got your first moment and instance that you did go into the studio? Because that is a total different thing. That's a different monster altogether and and within itself. Totally. It just felt, (laughs) to be absolutely truthful, it just felt like a train wreck because you're (laughs) not, you don't, you don't know what things are supposed to sound like. You don't know that it isn't, it isn't like getting your headphone mix right, getting all of these other things together that you need to get that you kind of need to be comfortable with. You don't even know what your comfort zone is. So it's a learning curve, learning how to be that person in the studio and be that musician that plays live. Mm, mm, mm. So how do you balance that? How do you, do you, do you have to prep yourself before you go into the studio or do you have to prep yourself and kind of psych yourself out? Like, yeah, you got this to, to do the stage, do the performances. How do you do that? Anymore, and I, and I want to say I was really lucky that uh, my learning curve, even though I had one going into the studio, I always had this, this kind of mantra where it was like, well, in 30 minutes, no matter what, in 30 minutes, it'll be over. So, <laughs> so I think by thinking that way, I just kind of always told myself, you know, just do it. And then there's not a lot of torture about it after the fact, even if it's not perfect, even if it isn't these other things. So I think by thinking that way and kind of having a, I wouldn't call it completely fearless, but just not being worried about the outcome that geared me up towards, okay, well, you know, every, it actually is a great 
idea to have for being in a studio. Just another take, just one more take that that's, you just keep trying it until it comes out right. And also to not be judging yourself while you're making those takes that let's do wow. that after do all of that. Just get it all out and then get it all in <laughs> while you, know, you get it in. <laughs> a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people cannot do that. They can't clear their minds. They can't just say, you know what? We're just going to do this. However it comes out, it comes out. Do you like your voice? Do you love your voice? Do you I, not like want to hear your voice after I, you've done I, things? I never want to hear my voice. I, for for years, I wouldn't even listen to releases. We were just talking about finding that video. And I was like, I, I don't even know where it is. Because I've, I've always had this phobia of listening to my voice. Only in very recent years, like the last two or three Mm -hmm. Have I been able to do that? And, you know, because I've been trying to tool around in the studio and see how things work, I think I'm not less critical of what I'm hearing, but just more into what I'm learning than I am giving into the critique, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> so you're, you're continually learning even now. Never stops. And I'm so yeah. grateful. I'm so grateful. <laughs> wow. So what, I mean, you, okay. So in the last, okay, the last few years have been COVID, yes. which is like damaged so many people's careers. You don't it even has. know. Okay. But I, I wouldn't mean, have gotten, I wouldn't have gotten this recording that we're talking about right now if it wasn't for COVID. I don't think that would have actually happened. That was a, a pandemic situation where the guys that were, that had, were doing the track for the film, they said, oh, let's we need to find somebody that can do this. And, you know, if they would have just been able to go and call up whoever they normally call, I might not have come up in the conversation that, you know, John had with some, a friend of mine who said, Hey, she's, she's hanging out. And I was hanging out because mm. <laughs> of COVID. So I was able to just kind of turn around and do this recording really quickly. And um, I'm really grateful for that, but you're right. COVID totally just went in there and wreaked havoc. It wreaked havoc. It wreaked <laughs> havoc, girlfriend. It did. It did. It, it did like this. You on your way up. You on your way up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here we go. What happened? <laughs> it was like which way is up. That's what it became. Oh, more it than was like it just fell like to the ground. <laughs> solid hit the concrete. There's a hole in it. I mean, literally speaking, it's like yeah, yeah. What happened? I know. I the know. bottom fell out of everything. I, I mean, know. it was just an economy that was doing so well. And I know. The bottom fell out. So you did this song during COVID. What else did you do during COVID that you would not have had the opportunity to do if you would have been on that, you know, rise like everybody else was? <laughs> yeah. So um, normally uh, I have my own rock band that we do, you know, we go out on the road and we tour all over. And that's basically how we've sustained ourselves for all these years. Independent, do our own thing. Um not really promoted by anybody else. So not being able to go on the road and do shows was devastating um, for a very small independent group like ours. So we said, ah, you know, everybody can't do, like nobody can go to any shows anywhere. They can't even go to sporting events. What if we just started doing stuff online? You know, what if that would be, we started thinking about, you know, I feel like uh, this is kind of falling in around me, not being able to do anything or being told that there's no way for us to do this thing. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I, who's also in the band, we just started doing our own shows on Facebook and Instagram. And yeah. we would just do like one show a week. And the what we would have never done because we were always coming up with an excuse not to do it ah, it's got to be this kind of thing, or it's got to be that, or blah, blah, blah. And then we just started saying, you know what? People just need music. So 11 o'clock in the morning, we're going to show up on a Tuesday or a Thursday and play music. And we would just do that. And we, I was so amazed by how thankful everybody mm -hmm. was for doing it. And it just made me feel wonderful doing it, mm -hmm. you know, just being able to put that out there and give it to people with no yeah. real reason, just because the world needs it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think COVID and the situation of COVID really changed a lot of people's minds about their careers, where they want to go. What happened to you and your husband during this time of pensive thought? That's what I call it. The time yes. of pensive thought. Well, you being a musician, you understand that so many things that we start doing as musicians, we're like, well, that's the way we do it. 
we just we we book these tours and we just do it. You do the record out, you do it, and you promote it this way, and you just get out there and you hustle and you just stay gone, or you you know you try to you tell yourself all these things that aren't necessarily the way that you would have written your like this is the way I'd like to do music, but it's what you're used to. Well, as soon as COVID happened, you come up with another, um, the, a new alternative, the new normal, which was nothing like what we knew. And I started thinking, you know, this is not bad. Figuring out like me sitting in my skin and kind of figuring out, oh, I really like playing this song this way. Oh, I really like doing stuff as a duo with my husband. Oh, I really like, you know, not going to the airport. Oh, I really like, <laughs> I really, oh, I, I'm always appreciative, but I really liked it. Come not, on. Not, you know. <laughs> I, I really like that not to have to do the hurry up and wait. Okay. Yes. Really like that. Yeah. 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 So that really, it just made me think wider about what my, how I saw things going for me and for me to look at it the way that so many other people did where you just start saying, you know what, this is my life and my mm -hmm. career. And it really doesn't matter. Like they're like, whatever way we think it's supposed to be done, it doesn't have to be that way for everybody. No. And I'm not everybody, even if. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, sister. I hear you. <laughs> you know, I am truly loving the fact that people have been able to sit back, like you said, and relax and rethink their lives. There have been so many different career changes and inside of their current careers, they have changed the way they operate so that they get more rest, that you don't have to expand yourself so far, you know, apart that you need two of you, you know, it's, yeah. like, it's, it's so much better. It's so much better. So this, this song that we're talking about today, you said it came about during COVID. How did you guys go about doing that? Did you have to do it remotely? Because, you know, we did have that whole thing where you couldn't be around each other and all kinds of stuff. This was during one of those spells where you couldn't go anywhere else. And we're we're lucky. We have our own studio set up here. Excuse me. We have our own studio set up. So I was able to just get the track and we did it all remotely. And it was one of those things. I don't know how much stuff you've done in film, but it seems like any time that they've got to get songs ready for a film. It's the absolute last minute thing that they've got to hurry up and get done so that they can start editing and cutting everything around what they've, what they're going to use as a place. Yeah. So it was, it was one of those things where I got the call, um, asked if I could do it. And it was like, can you get it done in two days or something like that? Really, really <laughs> fast. It was really quick, oh, yeah. but it was, but it was also during the, the, um, time when everything was just shut down. So I was, I was able to just kind of take it in my head and, and, and work and get it done pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And what have you taken away from this moment where COVID came in and kind of ruffled everybody's feathers, but then it, when, when, you know, when everything kind of settled down, there are certain things that like myself and a lot of people have adapted from COVID that we are not giving up anymore. What aren't you giving up? Um, sleep, <laughs> rest. Like, I think my body was just like, oh my God, I have needed this break forever. And I don't think I was ever going to get it. It was one of the healthiest. And I'm not even a person that was like ever trying to be, ah, oh, just keep going until I can't sleep. But I thought a certain kind of sleep was sleeping. I thought that was rest. And it was like, no, you got to actually relax when you sleep. You got to actually turn it down. You can't be taking all these thoughts um, in your mind with you every time that you go to close your eyes. The other thing that I learned from this is small wins and gratitudes to just be grateful for any little thing. I used to be really like, if, if you're not winning, you're losing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know how that feels. Oh my God. Cause that's the way the industry kind of was. It was like, they were constantly telling people like, ah, oh, you only sold 30,000 records when, you know, the benchmark was a million. Oh, you only sold this. But then anytime that benchmark will get shut down a little bit further, then all of a sudden, ah, oh, you didn't sell 30,000. You only sold 10. Like no matter what, it's like you start saying, Hey, I sold a record today. Win. Gratitude. <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, a lot of people would love to sell a thousand. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
and you know, you just want to find the people that really need to hear your music and mm -hmm. and understanding that there's a a place for everyone, not feeling like everyone has to be a certain level or a certain thing. <sighs> It's wonderful to really have rested in that for a few years, everybody having rested in that. And, you know, some of them lost their minds, but a bunch of them got clarity. And it's, I feel like I'm one of those people that was lucky enough to get clarity. I do. I'm never giving up sleep. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, I feel good today. What the know. heck? <laughs> it's unlike anything else. I think it, it yeah. was a really good lesson for the world to have to sleep, you know, mm -hmm. sleep in and take it all easy. So, yes. Yeah. I think it was less crime then, too. <laughs> like, I, I think so, too. There was a lot was of fireworks. Nice. Yeah. I don't know about you, but it seemed like I didn't know that many people had that many firecrackers and <laughs> well, I was like I, I can imagine it's like oh we're alive today let's oh my some God. yeah it was like it was but it was I was fine with it I was like you know I could deal with this I know the animals don't really like it that much but yeah you know I could see if that's way better than a gun that's what <laughs> thank you thank you because the bullets come down that's you know right. yeah we don't need that <laughs> Wow. I am just so happy that this happened. So now that, you know, COVID is, is, is here to stay, it's not going anywhere. It's exactly. like, oh, it's just, just not, it's the endemic. It's, it's just going to keep going. Okay. Yep. yep. But what are you now doing and what's the new song that you got out that we just have to listen to today? So now that the world is pretty much on its, you know, on its wheels again and rolling this year. Square this wheels. We're on square wheels. Square. <laughs> no, you don't have no round wheels yet. Somebody get out there and stop chipping, okay? I'm just saying. All right. Never mind. In this world, <laughs> in this new world where we're all ready for anything to change really quickly, um, I'm really fortunate that I was able to work on this uh, this tune, this Rise Up tune with Black Needle Noise. Um, it's, it's wonderful. Um, it's emotive and I'm really, I'm really proud of it. It was, I was really lucky to get it. And I'm so happy that I'm, you know, now a part of it. Wow. wow. You know, a lot of people, and I'm going to say this with, with, with care and with love because <laughs> my listeners, oh, she's already laughing at me. I already yeah. know. Yes. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We're this living in America, right? I know. Hold on. I'm trying to be serious. Hold on a second. <laughs> so a lot of people out here think that, they have to kill it yep. to win. Yep. But yep. can't we just kill it and be ourselves and win? Exactly. Can't or you know, maybe sometimes you just don't kill it. Sometimes it's just like, hey, that was Knock pretty it out good. A little bit. Sometimes Please. pretty good is really good enough. You know, it's all this all this talk like you gotta always do this one thing, you gotta always do this, or you gotta always be in competition with whatever the thing is in your mind. And that's where the small wins and gratitudes come in, where you just start saying, you know what? I got toast this morning. I'm so happy. You know what? I woke up and um, my cat came up and meowed to me. That was really nice. Like mm -hmm. those are the small wins and gratitudes that I'm so happy for. Because yeah. people in COVID weren't waking up. People were just going to sleep and never waking up again. And that was, that was not lost on me. Right. Yeah, and my my um my sister she passed away. Oh, of COVID. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My stepfather passed away of COVID as well, and so I lost, and a couple of my other friends uh, also didn't wake up. So I it was it was a very hard time for a lot of people. Um, and and especially when people were saying, "Oh, it's fake. It's not real." It's like, okay, <laughs> so if it's not real, it's fake. Yeah. Then yeah. why aren't they breathing? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, why aren't exactly. they breathing? So I know. why do I have to lose something so dear to me for and, and it be fake? Yep. And but I also think just like what we do with our time when we're when we're growing from this, there mm -hmm. are some people that were used to having a lot of things to distract their minds, to yeah. keep them going. And as soon as those distractions are there, what they got to listen to is not the same thing. They right. don't have a voice of reason that's really trying to work it out. They might have a lot of a lot of situations that they that they're left with that they got to think about that they got to listen to and try to justify and instead of really thinking about it they just start raging out mm. and you know we have to 
you know, dealing with your feelings and dealing with your thoughts is not easy. You got to practice it. And, you know, there's a lot yeah. of people that really don't want to do that. They don't. They don't. What kind of advice do you give to people who, you know, they're not big, but they're happy, but mm -hmm. there's so much pressure to be big. Oh, you got to make it, you know, make what? Make what? What do yeah. you got to make? You got to make it what? Or do you want to make it happy? Or do you, I mean, make what? What kind of advice do you give these people? My biggest advice to anybody out there in the industry, um, especially now, is you do you. You do you the way you want to do you. Don't you feel like you have to kowtow to anything? If you want to be a rock star, go be a rock star. If you want to do this stuff in backyards and however, or, or never put out a record or just tool around putting out records, do that. Do the thing that makes you feel the best because when you, when you do that, you're actually really serving yourself. You're really listening to your heart. You're really, you know, very Napoleon dynamite kind of moment where, <laughs> where you're just gonna be yourself. You're gonna... <laughs> Don't get me started. I know, but those are the <laughs> things. It's so it seems like a postcard or a cat poster or whatever those things are that that are just so oh, it's so feel good. But it is. Why mm -hmm. wouldn't it be? It's about yeah. you. You're not here to please everybody else in the world. You're here to please yourself. Yeah. So if your mom is telling you you got to do this, or your dad is telling you you got to do this one thing, you're the only one that has to live your life. You're the only one that has to, to, has to, like, even if you have people in your life that are creative, they're not necessarily creative just like you. You're the only one that knows your path, your vision, and you should trust yourself. You should, you know, invest in yourself mentally. Like, mm. just say, hey, I'm going to trust myself and try this thing, do mm -hmm. this thing. That's right. You know, I love micro entertainers that are like, well, this is just how I do it. I'm like, you go, you inspire me mm -hmm. by doing that. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You know, not everybody is going to be Beyonce, but you can be who you want to yeah. be in life Absolutely. and take a hold of those reins and, and just you do you. Like you said, I love that. You do you. You do you. Yes, baby. Yes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show and I got to have you back. Whenever you have new music, please come back. I will. I will for sure. Awesome. This is great. Thank you so awesome. much for opening it up for me. Well, uh, we're going to open it up a little bit more. Guys, follow on Instagram. So it's Instagram. It's right there. Lisa Kekaula. Kekaula. Is that, is, that, is that Hawaiian? It sounds Hawaiian. It is. It is Hawaiian. Kekaula. Oh. Ah. So I love it. I love it. See, I knew it sounded familiar. I was like, how come I can't? I gotta think of the name. I have to think of where it's from so I can get it right. I get it. I totally get it. So now I got it right. Kick out. See? <laughs> My brain. Okay. Anyway, so you guys can get her at Lisa Kakaula on Instagram. Also, Lisa Kakaula dot com that would be her website where you can find out where she's going and, and her videos and all yeah. the great things that she has on there to give you guys <laughs> um we're gonna have that in the description box below so that you guys can go ahead and go and get it for yourself and i'm gonna take myself off the screen because she's got to introduce her song so go for it girl <laughs> everybody everybody please take a great i mean i'm so glad you're here but um this is rise up by black needle noise Featuring me, Lisa K. Kawa. You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry go round. And you can't find a fighter, but I see it in you. And we're gonna walk it out and move mountains. We're gonna walk it out and move.
silence isn't quiet And it feels like it's getting hard to breathe And I know you feel like dying But I promise we'll take the world to its feet And move mountains Bring it to its feet And move mountains Yeah And I'll rise up Thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time that I upload. And don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. I dare to be different. To be different. I dare to be different. I dare to be different.